If you have your Bibles, take them and open them this morning to the fifth chapter of Mark. We're still in the Beatitudes. We're looking through. Uh, last week, I was planning to do two Beatitudes, and I got one. So I thought, well, I'm just going to do one today, too. So we're going to look at one. We uh, are in this ser- uh, series called Believe, or I guess more accurately, Only Believe. Only Believe. And there is power when we believe the things of God, the truths of God, the ways of God, the love of God. And as we'll look at this morning, the mercy of God. There are so many wonderful blessings that are there. Now here's the thing about this series. We know these things. We say that these are truths that we believe. But somehow, over the process of time, living in this world that is a sinful world, we don't always practice the things that are the truths of God. And if, the, if we hold those truths and know those truths, if we truly believe those truths and yet deny them the actuality in our life, living them out, practicing them, what's the purpose? What's the good from it? They need to affect our practical thinking and our daily living. How are we practicing these truths that are supposed to bring happiness, joy, blessing, and peace to our lives? Literally, y'all look up here. We have not because we practice not. So we need to make sure, we need to to, to take an x-ray of our life. I saw this uh, verse today, as a matter of fact, early this morning. Psalm 62, verse 8 says this, Trust in Him, are you ready for this? At all times. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. You don't have to go defend yourself. You don't have to take things into your own hands. You don't have to, uh, to say, Lord, you're not doing anything. You're, you're inactive. I need to step in. This is what needs to be done. No, you can just know and understand that He is God. Trust Him. Trust Him alone. Rest in Him. Find your strength in Him alone. Pour out your hearts to Him. You can rely on Him. How blessed we would be if we would do that in our life. These things are the building blocks to truth and also to blessing and yes, even to happiness. Don't change the recipe. Y'all like it when you get a good recipe? I mean, it just works. And you go, pow! Matter of fact, Melba, my good, Melba, you do some great things and I look at your your precious sister over there, and she puts these things on on Facebook, these cakes. And there's these recipes that are tied to it. And I'm here to tell you, Mickey, you do good stuff. No, I didn't say that. Now, here's the thing. Why would I take something that works and, and tweak it? Why would I look at it and say, no, 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 I don't think I should do that. I think I should do this. Now, if Brian got a hold of one of Mickey's recipes, you know what would happen? Oh, you can say it. Because I know you're thinking it. You're thinking, no, awful. And that's exactly right. If it's good, leave it alone. Eat from it. Enjoy it. Eat from the manna that Christ cooks for us. Good stuff. Good stuff. If you have your Bible, stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. One verse. Not always easy to practice. One that is so very known. But we need to take the key and open the door and walk in to the blessings. Verse 7 says this. Blessed, happy, anointed, the hand of God's power are on you when you are the merciful. 
Now there's a key to this. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Anybody in here good with wanting mercy in your own life? Well, there's a recipe for it, and let's find it in Him today. Let's pray. Teach us to pray, O oh Lord. Teach us to come and walk into Your presence to give You the praise that You deserve, to pour out our life before You every day, to pour out our circumstances, to ask for Your help. Lord, we need wisdom, and Your truths are there for us. Father, connect with us in our prayer. Connect with us in our lives and how we seek to honor You by living Your Word, by trusting in You and in You alone. You're the Almighty. You cannot make a mistake. You never come up short. So be with us, Your people as we lean and rely and trust in You. Father, afresh today, teach us what it means to be merciful so that we can obtain the mercy that flows so readily from You. Speak, Holy Spirit, to our hearts. We want to hear Your truths. Amen. And Lord, we need your help in applying them because it doesn't come easy. May your will be done in our lives for your glory, but Lord, for our benefit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God for his mercy. Praise God. That He does not give us what we deserve. He gives us better. And let us be recipients of that mercy. Let us pray for that grace. Let it come and flow. Let it, let it be our standard that we... That, that, that's the appetite that we're aiming for. But church, may the world see it in us. One of the most beautiful things about God is His grace and His mercy. Let the world see the beauty of our God. Let the world see the, the truth and the majesty. It will make us look so different from the world because they are all about receiving mercy. I don't know of anyone that doesn't want mercy. When you're in pain and it's being poured upon you and you have nowhere, nowhere else to go and you're looking for uh, an escape, you're looking for love, you're looking for the release, you're looking for mercy, everyone wants mercy. The thing is, is not everybody is willing to give mercy. Mercy is the grace of God that's been poured upon you by not receiving what you deserve. Now, we reap what we sow. That's a law. We talked about that a few weeks ago. When we put things in process, there are things that we deserve from our actions. But yet sometimes God or someone else will step in and, and catch that, that consequence before you receive it. They will intercept the hardship that comes from what we've sown in our life. And, and, and says, no, 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 I'm going to take this. You don't have to have it. I'll receive it for you. Someone's going to have to feel the brunt of that pain. Someone needs to be willing, come on now, to intercept it, to intercede. Someone needs to come and take it so that you don't have to. That's what God was so willing to do for us. Our sin was there. All of us owed that consequence. None of us deserve the goodness of God. Amen? And yet, God promised the opportunity for more. 
He took the thorn and the pain away. At the cross of Calvary, he intercepted what we deserved and took it upon himself. He bore our consequence. That is mercy. And you're never going to be more Christ-like when you are merciful to someone else. When you actually are practicing in your life what Christ did for us. Mercy lived out every day. Mercy lived when it's big. Mercy lived when it's small. Mercy lived when it's hard. Mercy lived when it's easy. Mercy that is given, come on now, as a gift of love for someone else. Not what they deserve. That's not the story. <laughs> someone wants to say, no, 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 but, but they deserve this. You, Pastor, you don't know what they did to me. Right? Well, you don't know what I did to Christ. And I don't know all the things that you did that he had to pay for. But aren't we all grateful that he did? Right? It's not a matter of if we need mercy. It's if we're willing to give it. That's what it's all about. We need to be a person. I wrote this down in my notes because I, I, I know it's blunt, but I want you to hear this. Who habitually is a giver of mercy. I use that word because I want us to be cre create a habit of being merciful. I want it to be our first reaction. I want it to flow so easily from us that, that it, people, when they see us, they will say, that is a merciful person. I'm just not too sure that we want this attribute. We think that we'll be seen as weak. We'll be a doormat. People just run over us. Matter of fact, I hear all the time people brag about the fact, well, if they do that to us, they don't know what's coming. They think they're going to get this, they're going to... They're going to get something, all right. I'll make sure that they get something. People brag about that. Shake your head if you know what I'm talking about. And, and really, it all comes from judging. We look at it. I'll even give you this point. We may even be rightfully judging. But that doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter I was rightfully a sinner when Jesus forgave me, right? And we say, we say well, I'm weak if I let them get by with it. I'm not going to let them get by with it. They're not going to run over me. That is the definition of mercy, is being willing to give mercy even when it's hard. God wants us to give mercy. God wants us to give mercy. If you have your Bible, um, look over in the Gospel of Luke in chapter number 18. Luke chapter number 18. I love this story. <laughs> it's kind of hard, but I love this story. Are you there? Say amen. Luke 18, verse number 9. Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Here's the parable Jesus gave. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Boy, doesn't that, that sound presumptuous? I am so grateful, Lord, that I'm not like them extortioners, unjust, adulterers. And then he looks at someone and judges them and says, 
or even as this tax collector. Now he's going to tell you why, how, why he's so good. I fast twice a week. I give tithe of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, hmm, there at that place of prayer, where one was standing bragging to God about how good he was, the other one did not even feel worthy to get close, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. The one who was justified in his own eyes was not justified in the eyes of God. It wasn't that he was a bad person. He thought he was doing all of these things, but he could not see the mercy that he needed as well. But someone else could look at himself and say, I'm not worthy of your mercy, but I'm so desperately in need of it. And when he cried out, God was willing. Come on, God was willing. The God that we serve is always willing to give mercy. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, brought low. And he who humbles himself will be exalted, lifted up. Pastor, why are you saying this? Very, very plainly. If you feel like that you're so just that you don't have to give mercy, you look down upon that person. Come on. You judge that person. Maybe even rightfully so. and you're not willing to give mercy, God says, I won't give it to you. But if you lower yourself and you see yourself in need and you cry out to God, God says, that's the one that I will bestow mercy on. So here's what we need to make sure that we know in our practical daily life. If you think you're so good that you don't have to give mercy, watch out. It's not a matter of if someone's done wrong. But if you're quicker to judge and critique and criticize and blame and gossip, because all these things flow from it, be very careful. When you're raising yourself up, God will make sure you get lowered down. But if you lower yourself, God not only will give mercy to you, He will make it abound in you. This is one of Christ's Beatitudes. Blessed, happy, anointed is the one who is bestowing mercy. Jesus was doing the right thing because He was one who bestowed mercy. We need to be like Him. Listen, somebody's going to always be putting us down. We're supposed to be running the race. Is that correct? It's not going to be easy. And you might as well come to know the fact that there will be people who will cheer you on and some that will give jeers as well. I heard someone this past week say that when, when someone praises you, do it like chewing gum. Chew on it for a while, but don't swallow it. Amen? I mean, chew on it, but then let it go. Let it go. But there's always going to be somebody that's going to be critiquing. You will face disappointment. You will face disapproval. I don't care who you are. We all have critics. Some of us more than others. Have y'all ever heard me say this before? <laughs> Satan's always trying to tear up relationships. Y'all heard me say that. Satan's always attacking relationships. 
and he's pretty good at it. Don't let him. Don't take the bait. He comes and wants us to, he wants to divide us. He wants to say, look at that person. Look at, look at that area in their life and how ugly and bad it is. And if you're not careful, you will critique and criticize. But what we all need is someone to encourage us. To bless us. And from their own personal understanding, not give them what they deserve. Give them better. Give them love. Don't you think that they need it? Don't you think that they need it? Take your Bible, look in Matthew 18. Y'all are listening fast today. I like that. Matthew 18, verse number 23. Well, let me start in verse 21. Sorry, guys. I tell, every time I tell them the Scripture, I always back up. Y'all there? Say, say amen. Matthew 18, verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Is that a good question? Is there a time that I don't have to forgive anymore? Lord, it's not, he's not saying... Should I forgive? I have forgiven. But I've had to do it multiple times. How often am I going to have to do it? Verse 22, Jesus said to him, I, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. That's an unlimited amount of times. Someone said, do I only have to do it 490 times, not 491? I said, well, if you're counting up to 490, you've got another problem you don't know about. Right? I'm not sure that you actually forgave the first time. Verse 23. Here's the parable. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Preacher, how much is that? An unpayable debt. There's no way it could be paid. Verse 25. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. That's what he deserved. Rightfully deserved. He had a debt. Nobody can question that. It should be paid. That's right. We understand that. Verse 26. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. I appreciate his heart, but it was an unpayable debt. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Moved with compassion. This is an act of love. This is a wonderful thing that we're seeing here. And because there was love, he let him go, and he forgave the debt. That's a, that's a shout, glory, hallelujah moment. The debt has been taken off. The burden has been released. You have been set free. No longer to be held by it. Verse 28. There's that ugly word that we see in Scripture, but. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Pocket change. He laid hands on him, took him by the throat. This is not compassion. Would you all agree with that? I mean, the one that he had the unbelievable debt to had compassion on him. Once again... This is a debt. It's a small debt, but it is still a debt. But the way that he comes to it is not in compassion. He's got this guy by the throat and says, pay me what you owe. Should the person have paid him? Sure. 
Sure. But this person is showing no mercy whatsoever. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Sound familiar? And he would not, but went through him into prison till he should pay his debt. That's a funny place to earn money to pay a debt, being in prison. So when his fellow servants saw that he what, what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Listen, if we are merciful, others will shout it. If we are unmerciful, others will see it and share that too. We will be Christ-like and He will get great glory. Or we'll be like us and the ugliness of us will be seen by others as well. Verse 32, then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry, delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him, an unpayable debt. That sounds like a long time. That sounds like a pretty good description of hell to me. So my heavenly Father also will do to each of you from his heart, if, if from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Release the debt. Give mercy, receive mercy. No mercy, no mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. One last thing. I'm not going to read it to you. You know the story. Jesus told another parable about someone who was going to, uh, a landowner, who was going to go off into another place for a point in time. So he entrusted some of his goods with his servants. He gave to one, the term there was used, five talents. He gave to one three, gave to one one. The one who had five used it and was blessed. The second used it and was blessed. The third, no, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to take what was given me and I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hide it away. I'm not going to use it. So when the master came back, there was a reckoning. He, won, he went to the one who gave five, and the one proudly said, this is what you've given me, this is what I have in return, twice as much. To the second one, the same thing. This is what you gave me, this is what I've given back, twice as much. Keep it, great, wonderful. But to the one he gave one to who didn't use it, I knew you to be a hard person. I was afraid. I didn't use it. And the master was disappointed. Here's the point. To the ones who took the, the gifting, to the ones who took the talents, to the ones who took what came from the master, and used it the way he wanted it to be used, it was multiplied and they received from it. They received the increase. But to the one who had that entrusted to them, who could have used it in the same manner, but they said, no, I will not use it. 
Even what he had was taken from him. And what was more important, the master says, wicked servant. Now let's apply it here. If God has given us mercy, and he has told us to take that mercy and use it, in the same manner that we've received it, to use it, it will be multiplied. And that's a God thing. That's a good thing. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. But understand, if you receive God's mercy, but you don't act with a heart of compassion, you judge, you critique, you criticize, and it's hard, and you're not willing to give it, then God will take from you that mercy. How terrible. I don't ever want God to look at me and say, wicked servant. It's not a matter of if you're going to be attacked. I'm attacked all the time. I'm critiqued all the time. I'm criticized all the time. There was a time in my life I was going through a very, very hard time. Please hear this. And my biggest critic wanted to meet with me. Matter of fact, I had invited him to meet with me. And he came in and um, he asked somebody to be with him. I'm like, absolutely. And he shared what he wanted to share with me. I learned a long time ago, listen. Listen. John Bassanio, pastor of First Baptist Church, Houston, Houston Texas, great man of God, he, he taught me that. He said, when, when, when someone has something to say, listen to them. Now, what they say may have a lot of wrong in it, but there may be a seed of truth in it. It may be 90% wrong, okay? but it may be 10% right. You can actually take someone who's going to come at you with 90% wrong, and you can actually learn from it and grow from it. I heard Rick Warren say, after 42 years of being the pastor at Saddleback, in, in, in a, I can't remember the name of the town in Southern California, he's going to leave after 42 years as pastor of that church. It's the largest church in the United States. It has an unbelievable influence. And, and, and I, I heard him say when he was talking about all the things that he went through, he said, I only grow in pain. I never grow when everything's good. And I thought, he had a boy that committed suicide. And I don't know of anybody that's as critiqued and criticized as he is. And yet, can we learn from that? Listen and learn from that. So this person came to me and they sat down and they just lit me up. And they were telling me this was wrong and this was wrong and I shouldn't have done this and I shouldn't have done that. And, and I just listened. And <clears throat> most of it was taken out of context, but it didn't matter. This person was in pain. Hurt people will hurt other people. And that's what he was trying to do. And I think Satan was jumping up and down happy. But I didn't take the bait. So he had his say and I listened. And, you know, I apologize for some things I didn't have nothing to do with. But that was okay. If it would help and heal, amen, hallelujah. So then I, I'll never forget. He turned and said, okay, it's your turn. And you, you know what he was? He was ready to get hit back. And I said, oh, I'm good. You don't have anything you want to say? I said, no, brother, I love you. I love you. I said, I know what you've been through. And by the way, he had been through some things, some hard things. Uh, he married the wrong woman, I can tell you that much. God wouldn't do that to anybody. I'm not judging. Sounds like it. I saw all the pain that he went through. And I said, no, I'm good. I love you. We're fine. I said, before you even walked in that door, we were good. Then I made this statement. I said, there's not a thing you can do to change how I feel about you. 
I get critiqued all the time. I get criticized all the time. I just don't have to let Satan win. I wonder, for those of us who've received so much mercy, are we willing to give it?